The Hebrew Bible's Book of Judges tells the story of Samson and how his flowing locks of uncut hair imbued him with immense strength. Samson falls in love with a woman named Delilah, and he tells her that because a razor has never touched his head, his god gave him superpowers. Turns out, Delilah was a spy for Samson's enemies and cuts off his hair, robbing him of his strength. Huh. Obviously, hair can't give us superhuman strength, right? Right, but what would happen if, like Samson, we never cut our hair ever again? We should start by talking about what hair actually is and how it works. Human hair is composed of three different parts, the cuticle, the cortex, and medulla. The cuticle is the outermost layer of hair and is made entirely of shingle-like dead cells. Next is the cortex, which is made up of a fibrous protein structure called keratin that gives hair most of its strength. Keratin is also the protein that makes up horns, feathers, claws, hooves, and nails. The cortex is also where we find melanin, which determines the color of the hair depending on how much or how little is present. Lastly, the medulla is the soft, semi-hollow center of the hair shaft. Interestingly enough, it isn't present in fine and blonde hair. Conversely, thick and coarse hair usually has a medulla, but there are exceptions to the rule. Hair grows out of the follicle and is formed at the base in the hair bulb. Cells multiply and divide inside the bulb, creating the hair shaft, pushing up through the follicle and out into the open air, where we can brush, dye, or style it however we like. So, what would happen if we simply decided one day to stop cutting it all together? Would it keep growing forever? I'm sure that hairdressers would recommend frequent trims to maintain maintain hair health, but they keep trying to upsell me on charcoal hair mousse, so they're not exactly impartial. What are the claims from hairdressers then? Stylist Harry Josh says that, if you feel your hair looks damaged or broken at the ends, I'd recommend a cut every six weeks. But he continues, saying that trims are not going to make your hair grow faster. You should cut your hair to maintain healthy strands, but you can go a few more months if you're trying to grow it out. That's a pretty reasonable answer. If you don't cut your hair, you can develop split ends, which are, as the name suggests, the dry and brittle ends of hair strands that have broken down the middle. There is no way to repair split ends, but there are treatments to prevent them. Skipping shampoo in lieu of just a conditioner every so often can help, as can the use of all natural hair products that don't use any harsh chemicals like bleach or artificial dyes, which permeate the entire structure of the hair and damage the cuticle in the process. However, the most effective way to prevent split ends is, well, getting a regular haircut. So, other than split ends, there isn't really any other detriment to not cutting your hair. And if that isn't a problem for you, there's nothing stopping you from letting your mane grow out Samson style. That isn't to say that your hair will continue growing unchecked forever though. Not all of us can be a modern day Rapunzel, like Xie Cho Ping with her Guinness World Record holding 18 feet of flowing raven locks which she spent 31 years growing. No, the length of our hair is determined by your genetics, and I'm afraid no matter how much time we give it, our hair might not reach that biblical length. It comes down to the three phases of hair growth, anagen, catagen, and telogen. The anagen phase is when the cells in the hair bulb multiply and push out through the follicle. How long your hair can grow in this phase is encoded in your genes. On average, hair grows about half an inch per month. Next, during the catagen phase, the root of the hair is cut off from your circulatory system, and over an average course of three weeks, the living tissue in your hair dies, leading into the final phase of hair growth, the telogen phase. At this time, the strand of hair is entirely dead to the root, and will fall out naturally. Typically, you shed anywhere from 50 to 100 hairs per day, according to the American Academy of Dermatologists. Shedding significantly more than this might be an indicator of natural hair loss, or a condition like alopecia. That being said, at any given time, there are new hairs growing to replace ones that we lose naturally. This shedding is the reason why our hair won't necessarily grow out forever. It's also the reason why shaving or cutting your hair won't speed up its growth. The maximum length of your hair depends on the antigen phase. The longer this phase, the longer it will grow to, but it's not indefinite. Even if you decided to never cut your hair again, you won't necessarily grow long, sephiroth-length locks. This is the same reason why the hair on our bodies and faces don't grow to be as long as the hair on our heads. The three-phase cycle is distinctly shorter for hair not on our heads, 
and their growth is triggered by hormonal changes in puberty. For some of us, growing out our hair is a representation of our commitments. Specifically for members of the Sikh faith, a religion from the Punjab region of India, refraining from cutting one's hair is a visual cue for those around them of their commitment to their culture and faith, called Kesh. One of the founders of the Sikh faith, Guru Gobind Singh, gave his followers Kesh, uncut hair, and the turban as a uniform of their religion. Sikh men usually wear their hair in a top knot or a bun under their turban. Sikh women are also called to wear turbans for Kesh, but many Sikhs practice different level of commitments to their faith and may cut their hair or choose not to wear a turban. Moving north to China, after the Manchu army defeated the Ming dynasty and captured Beijing, the newly appointed Emperor Shunzi ordered all ethnically Han Chinese men wear their hair in a Q style, that is, shaved save for a section of hair at the back of the head, which was worn in a long braid to signify their fealty to the new regime under threat of beheading. This was scandalous at the time. Not only because the new emperor was threatening to kill them, but also because the Han people believed that hair was a gift from one's ancestors. So cutting it was a decision not taken lightly. Many indigenous cultures across North America also choose to let their hair grow out as well. Of course, how hair is worn varies from tribe to tribe, but they include braids, painted dreads, free-flowing, and sometimes tied back with wool. But regardless of style, long hair is seen as a representation of power and connection to the land. Sadly, throughout Canadian and American history, indigenous people's hair have been the locus of horrible discrimination. Starting in the 1870s, thousands of indigenous children were removed from their homes and put into schools where they were cut from their culture, their families, and by extension their hair, in an effort to civilize them. It doesn't matter why you choose to grow out your hair, be it on your head or anywhere else. What does matter is that you choose to do it. Of course, your hair won't grow out forever. There's a point for all of us when our hair will reach its maximum length and fall out, only to be replaced by new strands of hair. But whether we decide to see what that length is or if we want to cut it down to the scalp is up to us and only us. We don't need a religious or cultural explanation why we like our hair to flow long and free like the wind. In fact, we don't need any explanation at all. A good friend once said this to me, and it really stuck. As long as you like you, I like you. So go for it, friends. Let's see how long we can get. You know what? I think I'm gonna take the plunge. I'm, I'm gonna finally get me some bangs. Yeah? Do you want help? I've been cutting my own hair for years, and it took me a long time to get really good at it. Yeah... Um, your hair does look great, Brew, but but I think I might stick to online tutorials and um, I guess I'll see what they say. Okay, well, feel free to give me a shout if you want help. Sure, Brew, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll definitely do that. Oh, wait, uh, I, I just remembered, no, oh no, chill, not, not his tutorials. I, I didn't think you meant... I checked the internet, the internet. For, for ways to cut bangs, and I think I have everything I need.